let's do something interesting today. Today, we're going to talk about greenhouse jobs. Now, the interesting thing about jobs with a greenhouse is it looks at all specters of experience and education, and there's a spot for everyone in there. So what I mean by that is there are manual labor jobs in greenhouse commercial greenhouses that you can get that require no education really other than grade 12 or even less than grade 12. Uh, there are also jobs that require university level education and or master's or PhD level education and pay massive amounts of money on a salary to it. There's also the other side of the spectrum with small individual greenhouses that you can run yourself and scale up and make the same kind of money without an education as someone with a university or master's or PhD level education. So today, we're going to explore greenhouse jobs. Simple Tech, that's the name of this channel. And we have piles of videos on greenhouses and growing you can check out in our archives. And when I say that, what I mean is you're going to hear a lot of people others say, please subscribe because you're going to see our next latest fantastic video. You don't have to wait. If you join this channel, you can actually go through our archives and see dozens and dozens of videos on all kinds of different topics around greenhouses. So hit that subscribe button and if you like it, hit like. Okay, greenhouses are farming and there is all kinds of different jobs you can get with farming and related to farming outside. But we're gonna make the difference here and make the distinguishing point being inside. And the nice thing about being inside is that it's all 12 months of the year. Commercial greenhouses grow and they grow year round for food production. Some don't, but most do. So what we're gonna talk about in horticulture today is year round greenhouse jobs. And the first thing that we wanna consider is that although a lot of the big greenhouses automate everything, which can eliminate some of the lower end jobs, there's also a lot of jobs that exist managing and taking care of the machines that do the automation. So even with automation, there's still a lot of jobs to be looked at in greenhouses. So the first job we're going to look at, and of course, remember that a lot of these jobs in a small greenhouse are all done by the same person or one or two people. And in a large greenhouse, they're separated out into several people just because of the nature of a large organization. But the first job is construction and maintenance. Someone has to build the greenhouses. Some of the large commercial greenhouse operations are constantly building. They're sitting on an enormous amount of land and they're expanding into it every year. So someone is full-time building the new greenhouses and the systems that are required within these new greenhouses. And when I say systems, I mean the watering systems, I mean the heating systems, I mean the cooling systems, the venting systems. There's actually systems in large greenhouses for pollination and how they release the bees and how that's done. Um, CO2 is another major factor that needs work and has to have someone involved in either restocking the CO2 or monitoring the programs on a computer that is releasing the CO2. It gets detailed and there's a lot of work requiring it. So the first job around greenhouses is maintenance and construction. The next job, um, that every greenhouse has to have in some capacity or another is the seed planter. Somebody who's actually planting the seeds in the ground or in the hydroponic uh, mesh or mixture, whatever you want to call it, so that you can get going with the growing. So a seed planter is actually very essential and it's a job that doesn't usually require a lot of education. It just requires someone with some dedication that's willing to do the work and it can get a little monotonous because it's the same thing day in and day out. You're planting thousands and thousands of seeds every day with a large greenhouse, but it can also be rewarding when you look at the other parts of the greenhouse where everything is grown and you see the fruits of your labor. Seed planter, very important job in greenhouses. The next job after the seed planter, and it's often done by the seed planter during the same day, but this is going to depend upon the size of the greenhouse because larger greenhouses often will specialize their employees. And you may do one job one day and one job another day, but these jobs all have to be done. And that's plant maintenance. And if you're looking at 
especially crops like tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers that grow in a vine type situation, they have to be tied up so they grow up. They don't just automatically grow up. They flop over and then you got a nightmare. So every couple of days, someone has to come along and tie these tomatoes and cucumbers and peppers and whatever, vines, grapes, on some sort of trellis or rope so that they go higher and you can get a better harvest out of them. So plant maintenance is one way to call that job and it's an important job that you can get in a greenhouse that also doesn't require a lot of education. Harvesting in most greenhouses today is done by hand. Um, the main reason is when you're picking ripe fruits and vegetables, you got to be gentle and you don't want to break the vines, which often aren't the strongest, that are leading to the fruits and vegetables so that you can grow more fruits and vegetables. Harvesting well, this is the final product. I mean, you know, if you're snacking on what you harvest, you're getting something good and fresh. But harvesting is a job, again, that doesn't require a lot of education. Most commercial greenhouses employ people to do this and hire on a regular basis for this job. And the nice thing about the, the last three jobs that I talked about, the harvesting, the uh, seeding, and the planting, is that once you understand how a large commercial greenhouse does this and don't think you're just going to walk in and do it there are tricks like any job that can make you more efficient and can grow better and if you learn those from a commercial organization that has a fantastic product even if you only work there for two three four months it's almost like they're paying you to give you an education now the next few jobs don't necessarily sound like the standard greenhouse operation when you think about someone working in a greenhouse, but they're vital and essential to any greenhouse operating and working. And that's packing and shipping and sales. So once you harvest your crops, they have to be packed. Now, unless you're doing a small greenhouse organization where you're just sticking them into a paper bag and on a CSA and, and giving them to some locals that are paying you money for it, well, that's still packing. It's still got to be done. But if you're in a larger organization or a larger greenhouse, you've got to be able to pack and properly wrap and have everything sorted and pick out the bad stuff before it goes to your commercial vendors. And on the way to the commercial vendors, with larger greenhouses, there's another job, and that's shipping. Someone's got to drive the trucks that take your fruits and vegetables to the market. So these are somewhat manual labor jobs, but they're absolutely essential. And if you're going to run your own greenhouse organization, it doesn't hurt to work in them for a month or two just to see how the big guys that have everything figured out are doing it. It doesn't mean you can't do it better, but how do you know you're doing it better if you don't know how they're doing it? The next job, although it can be done with someone without an education, really helps to have some sort of education in it. And that's the manager or the person that works in the office, that purchases supplies, um, that organizes sales and where things are going. And it's a desk job. So in a large greenhouse organization, this job often requires you to have some sort of accounting ability. Um, the bigger the organization, the more education you're going to need to have an office job working with a greenhouse. In a small greenhouse, of course, you just wing it. You do what you can, you do your paperwork, you fill out your forms, you pay your taxes, and that's how you run your business. But the larger you get, the more specialized, and the more you're going to find with large greenhouse organizations That is that the person that's in the office very rarely does any of the manual work in the greenhouse. They hire and fire, they do the paperwork that's required, and basically they run the organization. But running the organization doesn't necessarily mean planting or picking the fruit. Now, the next job I'm going to talk about is the jobs that require serious education, master's levels, degrees, PhDs, major amounts of research. And the very large greenhouses that are out there will actually often employ someone with a master's or a PhD to keep everything running at optimal levels in their greenhouse. They're going to understand how particular plants work with temperature, work with humidity, work with CO2 injection. And when you can tweak these things right, you can get anywhere from 20 to 100% more production in the same amount of time 
out of your plants. Now, think about that. If you have an enormous multiple greenhouse commercial operation, and you can suddenly add 50% to your profits by hiring one person, <laughs> the person's going to get hired. So research and development and being able to, from a scientific proper academic background, monitor everything with growing has a lot of different aspects in the greenhouse world for jobs. And people will train for five, 10 years in higher education to get these jobs and they'll pay accordingly. Because in the private sector, if you can massively increase production for any kind of a business, that'll translate to a really good salary. That's the greenhouse jobs or the main jobs that exist within greenhouses that can be separated out with a large organization or that if you're running a small greenhouse commercial organization, even if it's part time, you've got to do them all yourself. So those are the things you have to really consider. Now, as I've gone through this, I'm thinking there might be something else. And I'm wondering if you can think of any other job that I haven't thought of here, please put it in the comments below. Hope to see you in the next video.